Okay, so the performance for this week's trick is not going to be on this video. It's going to be over, somewhere over here. Okay, just kidding. It's over there. Anyway, so click on that before you watch this to see the performance of three tricks using the same principle. Now, the secret of the three tricks is a key card. Right there, I just got my key card. It's the king of spades. The key card is the bottom card, and that's how these three tricks work. So now let's say my key card is the king of spades. I'm going to look at this card here without showing it to you. I'm going to remember it, so I'm the spectator in this case. But you know that the King of Spades is there. If I put the King of Spades on top of the spectator card in the action of putting it in the middle, now if I was to go through the cards, I would just need to look for the card that I know that's on top to find the selected card, which I know is actually the Queen of Diamonds. So now you know what the spectator's card is. Say our key card is the Ten of Spades. We're going to find out what this card is. We cut it in the middle. Ten of spades is right above this card. Now, if you need some help practicing this to make sure you've got it right, just pull out a couple doubles of cards, okay, like this, and um, this is something you can do. And take four cards, mix them up, upside down, pull out one of them at random so that you don't know what it is, get your key card, cut it into the middle, go through, and now say what your key card is. Okay, it's the five of spades. You look for the one that's missing the double to make sure you're right. Okay, so make sure you're going to the bottom. So if you're not quite sure how this works, try that drill real fast. Um, so this card is always going to be right above the uh, the uh, selected card. So the two of spades, I just need to look for it. This is a terrible job. There we go. Two of spades selected was the ace of hearts. So the first trick is quite simple. Get the key card. I put the spectator's card into the middle. Now if you always cut the deck one at a time, just one packet at a time, the math works that you will never separate from your key card um, on a roll here. So the king of spades will always be above the selected six of diamonds. However, you can usually get away with the shuffle. If you do it like this, it's the same as cutting it every time, so that'll work. What I usually do is if I know that it is in the middle somewhere, Okay, so I know my king of spades is towards the center. There it is. I'll usually give it like three cuts. I'll do a little one, a fat one, and another little one. Since I know the king of spades is somewhere in the middle, and I'm pretty sure it won't disturb it. So, anyway, after you've done that, you just turn over the cards. And as you go through like this, um, after a while, what you're going to do is once you see the uh, king of spades then you're going to know that the next card is their card. So this next card is that card, but you're just going to pass it and make sure it's a little bit off to the side so they can see it the whole time. Okay, and then you're going to play the little game. Next card I turn over is your card. So, you know, if you're, it's say your Uncle George, you know, I'll bet you, you know, a, a dollar, five dollars, don't make it anything expensive because, you know, he'll, he'd like to use some money anyway, right? Um, depending on how benevolent Uncle George is. but five bucks that uh, the card you turn over and then you just trick them by turning over their actual selected card. So that's how the first one works. So the next one, same principle, get your key card, just look at the side, make sure you know what it is, cut it into the middle and spread out the cards. Now you just need to look for where the card is. It's the queen of spades, so it's the next one, the four of clubs, but you want to dress it up. So find their pulse, actually find it, and then you can just do this and start weeding out cards dramatically as you go until it's just the last couple of cards and uh, then you show them that you find their card. And the last one is the probably the hardest application um, but definitely the most rewarding. You should have seen mom's expression when I did it. She was definitely fooled and really was amazed. So you get your key card. Okay, it's Ace of Spades. You're just going to spread out all the cards and what you want to do is make sure to keep an eye on the Ace of Spades. So you're just going to mix it all around and you say okay the first card you're going to touch is the Ace of Spades. They touch this one, whatever it is. And you're not going to show it to them, but you're going to say, oh, it's the Ace of Spades. Actually, it's the Five of Spades, but you say, oh, it's the Ace of Spades. Now touch the Five of Spades. They touch this one here. You say, oh, good job, you found the Five of Spades. Next, I'm going to touch the Queen of Spades. You touch the Ace of Spades. You just kept track of that the whole time. And now you have all the cards. Ace of Spades, Five of Spades, Queen of Spades, because you did yours last. So basically, you're touching them all out of order, because you get to decide one of them, right? And um, then you're knowing which one to ask them next. So you say you touch the Ace of Spades, they touch this one. 
Oh, good job, you touched the Ace of Spades. Now touch the Ten of Diamonds. Oh, good job, you touched the Ten of Diamonds. Now to I'll touch the Four of Clubs. There's the Ace of Spades. We have all three cards accounted for. And mix these up a little bit in case they were keeping track. Alright, so that's how that works. Um, if they accidentally, if they actually touch your card, wonderful. Just pull it out with however many, many you have and show them that they found it all on their own. Great. So let's talk a little bit about presentation, how you show the card uh, trick, the showmanship behind it. So I could do these tricks and I could know what their card is and say, all right, that's your card. I could do that, right? But it wouldn't really mean anything. It wouldn't really have a dramatic climax. Every good magic trick has three parts, you know, that sort of idea. There's no prestige to that trick. Um, so you need to build things up a little bit. Time has something to do with that. Um, or because if it's a trick that's not going to have anything that pops out at you or quickly changes or whatever, um, no really like magical moments per se, then you really need to convince them that it, what is happening is is really defying logic. So um, for the first trick with the bet, the surprise behind it is that the wrong card is being turned over and they think they've tricked you because they see their card in the pile. The second trick is all about am I going to get the card right or not? Is I'm maybe I'm weeding it out. You see, okay, he's still getting he's ten cards down. He, I still see my card. Is he going to get it right for the last bit? My my pulse. So that's the same idea, it's just that build up and build up until finally actually got the card right and it's pretty amazing that it worked without him seeing the card. So, And then the last trick, what it really is designed to do is convince them that they picked two out of three of the cards, which they did, but assuming under the assumption that it was the cards that uh, I named. And it just seems impossible that they touched the cards that were named. Um, and it's just a very clever trick. So make sure to build up your tricks. Make sure that they have good showmanship because um, you can have all the skills, but it won't really mean a whole lot to people unless it's built up and performed and presented well. And that's going to come with practicing with people. So present your card tricks well, and they will get better reactions.